Now let's switch gears to focus on metastatic non-small cell lung cancer, where we might not have had any actionable mutations up front. The current standard of care is single agent Pembro if you have high pd one and we combine this with chemotherapy if you have pd one 1 to 49%. Here we have Harmony 2, where we're seeing a novel PD-1 and VEGF inhibitor being compared to Pembrolizumab. Gilberto, your thoughts here on the study design and its findings? So this is a parallel to the study that I led a few years ago, Keynote uh, 42, in which we randomized patients to receive chemo alone or with pembrolizumab for patients with PD-1 of 1% and above. So it's the same patient population. And the reason I mention it is that I'm going to compare that pembrolizumab arm with the pembrolizumab arm for both 1 to 49 and 50 and above for when uh, we did Keynote uh, 42. And this is an extremely interesting study. We are trying to do the combination of VEGF and PD-1 inhibition in the same drug. It's a tetravalent drug that blocks both VEGF and PD-1. And we do have both preclinical and clinical evidence that this is uh, worthwhile. We have evidence from studies such as Empower 150 and from studies such as a combination of ramicirumab and pembrolizumab showing that you do get at least some progression-free survival benefit when you use these drugs together. In the EGFR mutant, we already had seen Harmony A at ASCO for patients that had been through osimertinib and we did see a benefit and that combination with chemo has been approved in China, although not in the US or not outside of Asia. And what we do see in this study does corroborate what we had thought. And uh, Orient 31 is another study of VEGF inhibition and PD-1 or PD-1 inhibition that shows some benefit. So it made perfect sense to try to do this. I, I think they were brave to do 1% and above. But if you really go to overall survival with a Keynote 189 and so on, you would imagine that patients probably did not do worse in survival. Patients certainly do worse if they don't get chemo in PFS, and I would not propose using immunotherapy alone at this time for anyone with pd ones between 1 and 49, unless patients have contraindications to chemotherapy. Absolutely. For those with 50 and above, it's a reasonable option. I more often than not add on chemo to get better response rate and progression for survival, except for patients that have low volume of disease and really don't need that extra response from the chemotherapy. And the results, as you're showing here, it's a hazard ratio of 0.51. It's not a hazard ratio that we see often. I'm going to mention before we talk about Dato that 10 years ago, I'm getting old, at ASCO, we looked into what should be considered clinically significant or clinically relevant outcomes when we look at metastatic lung cancer and we look at medium overall survival improvement and the hazard ratio that you should see. And what the experts came up with 10 years ago, when the best we could do was about 10 months of medium survival with Kim, when it was just at a, a, about the time when we were able to add on bevacizumab and improve that survival to 12 months, was that we should see hazard ratios of at least 0 0.8, preferably between 0.75 or better and at least three to four months in medium improvement. And here, uh, IVO or EVO, Nesimab, does fulfill those criteria. So in PFS, we are seeing an improvement that's many months, almost six months, and in the hazard ratio, it's a change of 0 0.51. Again, progression for survival, not overall survival, so we would like to see those data before we bring it into the U.S. There are two trials that are ongoing in ex-China um, geographies and one is harmony three which is chemotherapy plus pembro versus chemotherapy plus evo or ivo and those uh data will certainly tell us if this is something we will be using here as well but that's not something we're going to have next year that's probably coming uh, for 2026 and there's an extension of harmony a uh, outside of china as well and you we should hear about that a little earlier so this is extremely interesting. I think that this will pan out. If I had to bet, I would bet that it will work and that the drug eventually will be approved. And of course, we do need to see outside of China what those results will look like. But I'm very exciting. I think that this is something we will be using in the future.
Thanks for summarizing that, Gilberto. And as you stated, this concept has been actually tested very well in lung cancer space, as you mentioned, in Empower 150, as well as lung map. This IO wedge F inhibitor combination is active. We utilize this in hepatocellular carcinoma, a TISO and mm -hmm. BEV combination. <laughs> We know immunotherapy by itself doesn't work, and with VEGF combination, it does wonders. So this is definitely exciting, but there are some limitations. We have to await global studies, and also it'd be nice to see the comparator arm in intermediate group with chemoimmunotherapy as opposed to just, just rather immunotherapy, which is pembrolizumab.